Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Radiant Central and I'm your host Natasha St. Michael and thank you so much for joining me. So today let's talk about coffee. This is something that I'm, I have to say I'm asked quite often about is, is coffee really that bad? Does someone really have to eliminate it from their diet in order to have the best health ever? And I, I have to say, I know a lot of times it's, there's a lot of conflicting information out there and there's all sorts of research and, and information always coming up about the benefits of coffee. And so it's, a lot of times it's confusing and it's hard to decide, is it good for you or is it not? Um, I have to say yes, there is a lot of research showing the benefits of coffee, right? There's, it's great for having a boost of energy, it can also help with a lot of people with memory or focusing their mind on things, things like that. But on the other end of things, there's also a lot of disadvantages, right? Because coffee has caffeine in it, which is a stimulant and which can overstimulate the body. You know, I think a lot of people can agree that when they're drinking coffee, it affects their sleep. It can also affect their, their energy, you know, up and down, up and down. If they don't have their coffee, they feel terrible. Um, a lot of times, too, people, if they have too much coffee, they get heart palpitations. Um, it can also increase inflammation in the body. It can make the body quite acidic. And so for a lot of people, they get, if they're drinking a lot of coffee, they get a lot of aches and pains in their joints or their arthritis starts flaring up or bursitis, things like that. Uh, someone has low bone density too. It can affect uh, the, their minerals in their bones and it can actually decrease their bone density. So if someone has any kind of issue with that, it can actually make their bones more porous because it's, coffee itself is quite acidic. And also I'd have to say it contributes, if someone has anxiety, it can definitely contribute to that because of, of the, the caffeine in, in the coffee. So I have to say that with coffee, there's the pros and the cons, right? I just listed a bunch of them. And it's one of those things that it reminds me, whenever someone brings it up, it's, it's always, it reminds me of the subject of wine, right? That there's all this research on the benefits of wine, right? That there's antioxidants in it and there's, there's vitamins and minerals in it, and it might be actually contribute to a healthier heart and things like that. And so people think, oh, you know, they should be drinking more wine, and wine isn't so bad. But bottom line is that wine has alcohol in it, and there's no advantages to consuming alcohol, absolutely none. I mean, it, it damages your organs pretty much. And so it's one of those things that it has its disadvantages and it does have some advantages. And it, I think it's up to each individual to kind of weigh it out. But I. I have to say though, in general, the biggest issue I have with coffee is not so much the coffee itself. My issue is, is what people put into the coffee and what they're drinking coffee with today. <laughs> it's a big difference than what people were drinking maybe 30 years ago, or 50 years ago, or even 20 years ago, right? But nowadays, people are drinking coffee drinks that are just filled with syrups. They're filled with artificial creamers. They're filled with, with, with high fructose corn syrup and sugars. and and flavoring and like all sorts of stuff, all sorts of chemical stuff <laughs> is thrown into that basic coffee to make it taste like a sweet drink or a sweet hot drink or a sweet cold drink. And, and that stuff that's being, being mixed in with it, that's where, what's causing a lot of issues, more so than the coffee itself. So if someone were to say to me, like, is coffee all that bad? I turn around and say, well, you know what? Why not drink black coffee? Or why not just drink a simple espresso? And you know, if you need coffee that badly, go with that over going with a sweetened coffee or, or a flavored coffee. You know, it, I think it's fine to be putting nut milk or like a fresh nut milk or a full fat cream or something like that in your coffee, that's fine. But putting all the sweeteners in there, no. Putting syrups in there, flavoring, no. That, that's where you're, you're, you're coming to a big disadvantage. And so I think that's more of an issue, at least I have, with the consumption of coffee and how much people are drinking. You know, I think one cup of coffee first thing in the morning is not going to kill someone, especially if it's a black coffee and, or an espresso. If you really need it, go with that. And it's interesting to see for a lot of people, once they go on to just having like a plain coffee, then, then they don't even want it anymore. They don't even drink it anymore because <laughs> it, it no longer has like that, that fun to it. No longer has all the sweeteners. No longer is like this creamy sweet drink that they're drinking. And so a lot of times, even though people have been defending their coffee consumption, it's not so much about the coffee as it is all the other stuff they're throwing into it. So that's something that I, I would suggest doing. I also suggest if you really need the caffeine, 
go with tea, go with like a green tea or a black tea or a white tea or a chai or something like that. That itself has caffeine and, and a lower amount, but enough to give someone a boost and not having sort of the acidic effect that coffee has on the body. And it also has some antioxidants and other nice stuff in there as well. So it, it's, I, I would say it's just less harsh on the body, less acidic on the body, and still has some benefits and still has that energy boost that you're looking for. That's definitely a direction to go in. So in general, I would just say is if you're going to have the coffee, have it plain, have it early. Okay, don't be drinking coffee after noon. You know, I'd say noon is the cutoff. Try and keep it like first thing in the morning and that's it. And keep it to a minimum. I think that's that's another huge downfall is that people are drinking a lot of that stuff. They're not just drinking like a small little cup or half a cup of coffee. They're drinking like mug after mug after mug. And these mugs are like big mugs. They're not like a little cup. It's like a pint, you know, every two hours. And that, that can cause some serious issues. So it's keeping that stuff to a minimum. It's not overdoing it. A lot of times when people hear all the health benefits of something, they feel like it gives them the free ticket to just like indulge and gorge on this stuff and that too it's like keep it to a minimum you know just use it when you need it and and yeah but in general I would say if someone wants the best health ever then don't be relying on anything for a boost don't be relying on anything to give you energy be connecting back to your body to be producing that energy itself right that that's what you that's what the ultimate goal is is that your your body is so healthy it has the energy it needs it it's able to produce it it's able to get it from the food and make you feel good and, and that you feel alive and healthy without having to rely on things without having to have that coffee and if you don't have the coffee you're gonna have a lousy day who wants to be sort of imprisoned by that right so that's it. I think every person needs to decide for themselves. Do I think coffee is the worst thing ever? No. I think there's, and <laughs> bottom line, I think there's things that are way worse than coffee. Definitely. So, but it's one of those things that if you can be free of it, do. Do. Definitely do. You'd only be doing yourself favors. There's other ways of getting those other health benefits from other foods. All right. So that's my little view of coffee. And I want to remind everyone too, that the next 10 day juice fasting program, the next one starts Tuesday, September 2nd. So that's in a little bit over a week. And if you want to join us, it's a 10 day juice fast. It's an online program. You can do it from anywhere around the world and it's online programs. So there's a forum, there's guidelines for the juice fast and how to transition onto the juice fast and transition off of it, which is super important. If you want to do a juice fast properly, it's more about what you're eating before and after the fast than even the fast itself. Plus the online program gives you support. You're, it's a group effort, it's a group program, so you're not alone doing the juice fast, which is great for beginner juice fasters and also experienced ones that want to have fun, want some support, want some people to talk to that are doing it with them. So, and there's 10 juice fasting videos. Every day there's a video posted that's about 20 to 40 minutes long that walk you through everything you need to know about the juice fast and, and other topics too about natural health. So if you want more information or you want to sign up for the next 10 day juice fasting program, you can go to my website at radiantcentral.com, click on products and you'll see 10 day juice fasting program there. All right. Have a super fabulous day, everyone. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.